Hey guys, welcome to the X-Ring. On today's episode, what I want to do is review a device called a Magneto Speed T1000. Now, I don't want you guys to mistake this for the Magneto Speed that you always hear someone using a Magneto Speed as a chronograph. They are known for their chronographs. It's a bayonet style um, chronograph that mounts onto your barrel, but they've come up with a target indicator system that if you're going to get into long range shooting or even plinking at distance, this will make your life a lot easier. Stay tuned. All right guys, so in the box, what you're gonna find is a quick start guide, the owner's manual, the actual device itself, comes with two spare retaining straps, a spare blade, and then a spare mounting plate with spare Velcro, okay? Even though you have the name Magneto Speed, a lot of people, I think, mistake that for it being magnetic and it just sticks onto the back of a steel target, and that's not the case. You also have a aimer here or a cider, and basically, what this does is this mounts to the back of a 10 inch or larger target, and when you shoot that target, you're going to see this. Now guys, that is extremely bright. These can be seen with the naked eye for a mile. We've used them on mile long targets. And it has an 18 degree throw left and right. You can also, this not only has an accelerometer to basically measure the hits and it gives you the indicator, but it also has a microphone so you can turn it on for near misses. So if something's close enough and it hears that bullet whiz by, what it'll do is it will illuminate in yellow instead of red, letting you know that you're close to that target. So the construction of these, you have two Velcro straps, and these Velcro straps will enable you, when you take these off, to take the unit out. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a full disassembly here. So that's the base unit. Remember, you wanna aim it towards the, the person that's shooting. And they give you this handy little sight-in tool, looks like that. And what this does, guys, is this actually clips onto the blade itself so that when you're at the back of the target, what you can do is aim it directly towards the target so that they see it just like that. And you guys should be able to see that in the camera pretty well. Guys, these are self-healing. We've shot a lot of these. And as long as you have not placed this out too far, and I'll show you how we mount it, as long as you haven't placed it out too far, it can take multiple hits. It's when you expose too much of it and you take a round here, it can destroy one. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. But as far as the unit, you have, this is uh, extruded aluminum here, and you have two rubber end caps. So there's one end cap here. And what we can do now is slide the whole unit out just like that. You can see that extruded aluminum housing with another rubber end cap that comes off. The wiper just sits on top of that, but it's held in place by the actual extruded aluminum. Now, when we open this up, this right here is where it's gonna be powered by two AA batteries. And on the back side, you're also gonna see right here a series of dip switches. Or so it's like a garage door opener. And with the dip switches, you can go into the owner's manual and you can have it flash longer, shorter, higher sensitivity, lower sensitivity, near misses, or just hits. So what we're gonna do is I'll show you how to attach it and we're gonna shoot this with a 22 and we'll see if it'll register. We'll also shoot it with pistol. And guys, we shoot these things with six fives, 300 wind mags, everything else. And I think you're gonna be impressed at how this thing works. All right guys, so this is the back of the unit. They recommend going at the 12 o'clock position, but I can't here because of the straps. It is okay to go onto the side here, but you wanna make sure that you don't have your blade hanging over too much. You wanna protect this unit at all costs. So all we wanna do is just barely be able to see that blade and so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use some brake parts cleaner and then a rag, and I'm just gonna spray this off just so that it's nice and clean, and that's it. All right guys, so you have this Velcro piece which you could get at any hardware store or any place like that. You wanna put the loop portion, not the hook portion, because that's what's gonna be here on the Magneto Speed, because even though they're weather resistant, I wouldn't wanna leave these out too long for multiple days. So that's about where it needs to go. And then what I'm gonna do is I am just going to peel this clear plastic part off. I've made a sight on where I need to mount this. And it's gonna be about right here. You wanna make sure that the, adhesive, uh, the adhesive cures. And then once we have this in, which that's actually good enough, especially with the brake parts cleaner, now I'm just gonna barely leave the blade visible right along that line right there. So you guys can see that. And so when I hold this up, what we're gonna see is just that portion of it. You never want that thick part exposed. So on the angle that we're shooting at, I'm actually gonna go in just a hair more. 
just like that. Now, I still need to aim it. Is that because I'm shooting? <laughs> yeah, because you're shooting. <laughs> All right, guys, just to confirm, this is half-inch steel, not three-eighths. I mean, it is dead on half-inch. So what I wanted to show you was wipers that have been hit or damaged before. So I'm going to let you zoom in on this. Guys, this is a 5.56 impact. So this is perfectly usable, does not hurt it. But this was set properly so you could just see that beveled blade. If you put one in there wrong, you can expect something like that. On this one, someone had placed it where that much was exposed. The 308 round hit it right in here and it actually just blew that out. It still worked and it worked fine. You could still see the flash, but that's why you wanna get these set properly. All right, guys, so a lot of you might say, well, why do you need this? You can hear the gong or the steel ring after you've shot it. What you have to realize is with lighter bullets like a 5.56, when you get beyond five, 600 yards and you're shooting half inch steel, all you see is, you just see the, the impact of the round. You don't hear any type of report. So what we're doing right now is we're at 50 yards. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 365 at 50 yards. Even though we'll be able to hear it and see the movement if I hit it, I want you to be able to see that light source from the magneto speed. So we're going hot. Here we go, first shot at 50. So that was a miss, it was high. You guys, I can't tell you how bright that is. You can see it come on, then it will flicker, then it will turn off. So not bad. Now what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take a 22 long rifle, suppressed, and I'm gonna shoot it and see if we can get a flash off of it. All right guys, so now I've got a Savage. Uh, this is a Mark II, we call it the Grim Reaper. It's got a Silencer Co. Sparrow on it. We're shooting CCI standard velocity 22 ammunition. Now keep in mind, that is a very thick piece of steel and I don't know if it'll go off. Let's see, uh, let's see what it'll do. I'm gonna shoot on the left side away from the magneto speed because that's further away from the accelerometer. I don't, I don't know if it'll go off. It did not go off. Now, I tried to hold far left side of the steel. Now, let's see what happens when we hold right side of the steel where the T-1000 is. There it is. So just as I suspected, that accelerometer has to be able to pick up that impact of that bullet. And with me shooting the CCI standard velocity, I don't think that's going to be possible on the far left side because it's too far removed away from the steel itself. Let's back it up to 100. All right, guys, so now we're at 100 yards. I've got the SIG 365. Let's see if we can flash it from here. Nice. Look at that flash. Guys, that just that is so bright, even at 100 yards. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move over to that 22 and see even on, the, even on the right side, if I impact that right side, if that accelerometer will be enough to light that and show us a target hit. So these things are really designed for long range rifles, 6.5 Creedmoors 308. I'm probably not doing the right thing by shooting a 22 at it, but I just want to know to see if it'll pick it up. So we're going to do this at 100 yards. I'll aim on the right side to see if I can get that accelerometer to pick up the hit. And here we go. Works, works great. I actually aimed just a little right of center, but I wasn't intentionally just aiming on the right side. Let's try it one more time. Man, that thing works awesome. Because see, even with the suppressor on that thick steel, you can barely hear the impact. That might be able to pick it up, but man, seeing that visual cue, it's pretty darn awesome. So Magneto Speed T1000, price point's about $150 each. Uh, I've just picked up a lot of them because uh, I'm going to be the match director for Clinton House Plantation, and I know that at four, five, and 600 yards, I don't like to rely on ROs having to use the glass because that's going to take their or someone else's attention away from the shooter, and to be able to just visually see that red flash is going to make a huge difference at distance. They also offer a club price, so if you're a match director for a large club or something, they have a reduced rate, you have to call them directly uh, to get those units any cheaper. So Magneto Speed T1000, guys, I appreciate you watching the channel. Like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you go to xringtactical.com if you order any Defender, Palmetto State Armory, Cobalt Kinetics, anything like that. I've got it on my website. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for helping this channel grow, getting ready to bust 10,000. 10,000 subs. Let's keep this channel alive. Have a good week.